All right, folks, today I want to comment on a video that I found recently. Well, not so recently, but I'm getting around to it now. So it is recent. So um, this is a fight between a Japanese dude with a katana and a Chinese guy with a miaodao, which is a long two-handed Chinese saber. Uh, I don't know what movie this is from. It doesn't say there, but we'll just take a look at it and I'll, I'll comment a bit. Starting off, you can see the Chinese guy here just... He has this look of, really, dude? You want to mess with me? What makes you think you have any chance? That's, that's kind of what this expression looks like. It might be expressing something else, but that's kind of how I read it. By the way, I'm approaching this from a historical European martial arts perspective. I haven't trained either Japanese or Chinese swordsmanship, so I have my own biases, of course, and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of demonstrations from either, but I, I don't know the in-depth details, so I, I can't criticize them on their own merits. I can just comment on it from my personal point of view and uh, hopefully make this entertaining and all that. And if this keeps buffering some more, I might as well play some raid meanwhile. What? They're helping out with the, with the video. This is most likely going to get a copyright claim and be demonetized, so sponsorship really helps. So this is Raid Shadow Legends, an epic dark fantasy collection RPG on Android and iOS. You can collect over 400 champions from 16 factions like orcs, elves, knights, undead, etc. You know, check out the detail on some of those designs. You can customize the artifacts that you equip them with, and there are plenty of different mastery builds to tweak everything the way you prefer. That collection and customization is what I particularly like. Also, how you can play as much or as little as you want, anytime you want, wherever you want. Seriously though, don't mess with your phone in the workshop or anywhere else where distraction could cost you an arm and a leg, literally. Click on the special links in the video description down below. As a new player, you get 100,000 silver and one free champion from the Dark Elf faction named Hex Weaver. She's an excellent champion for beginners and... Hey, are you even listening? All right, so let's take a look. While keeping in mind, of course, that movies are gonna movie, so artistic license taken here, but we'll see what we've got coming here. Shing! Uh-oh. That's a wooden scabbard right there, as far as I can see. That should not make a shing sound. They do happen sometimes with metal scabbards, or if you have a metal throat fitting. Back sword. That doesn't seem to have any of that, so should not do the shing. Oh, kicking your own scabbard, dude. Are you being disrespectful toward yourself? Those are two guards you would also see in European swordsmanship. On the left, that would be called Langort or Long Point in the medieval German tradition, and the right would be Zornhut or Rathgard. Okay, it started out pretty appropriate, and then he did the spin for no apparent re reason. Let's take a look at that again, a little slower. Okay, so he sets off his opponent's cot, then, wait a moment, what happened there? Okay, so it looks like he was starting an undercut or rising cut from his left side, but then in the next one, he suddenly has the blade on the right side. So there's a bit of a choreography glitch, but this is the kind of thing that you really have to look at in slow-mo and stop it and start it again. Otherwise you would never catch that in the, you know, flow of the of the action okay that parry and then i mean it's actually not so bad that spin was done right after a parry and then he does it he lowers himself in order to strike to the leg that's actually not bad this is the kind of spin that i can live with because that that still makes sense and the other guy just raises his foot to escape it safer way generally would be to do a leg void, or at least what we would call a leg void in Hemo, where you just step back and bring the leg out of the way. That's more the oh shit kind of response, because it's quicker, it just messes with your stance, but it can work. Now there, problem here is he was really exposed, you can see how, how far his head was down, but the other guy was far enough away, I suppose, so 
he can get away with that. Okay, so he dodges that throw. What? Wait a moment. Why? He had him pretty much. Why did he drop down? So that is a very odd choice. Like even for choreography, that's an interesting choice. He has no real reason to go down on the ground now, unless he lost his balance, which I, I don't think he's supposed to be a sloppy fighter. And the thing is, if, if you look at this right there, as he twists out of the way, kind of rolls out of the way, he has, a, has an arm cut right there if he wants to. In fact, this almost happens automatically. If somebody thrusts at me and I roll to the side while bringing my sword up, I'm pretty much cutting them automatically almost. Considering how close those two stand right there, definitely easy arm cut. So he could have ended the fight right there. Instead, he decides to drop down on the ground and then fight from this compromised position where he has to roll around to dodge dodge the other guy's cuts like this is this is a terrible choice if it was deliberate i mean sure it adds some more drama to the scene but such a disadvantaged position you can't reach them properly all you can reach is their legs then your opponent has all the mobility they can run around you much faster than you can turn on the ground so they can just you know sidestep and attack you from an angle that you can not really defend against effectively so that is a rather strange choice. And of course, here we've got, well, action movie. It's not that it doesn't work. You know, strictly speaking, if somebody cuts to your leg, if you vault over top of it, I mean, it technically works. It's just a very, very unnecessary energy expenditure because there are much better options. At least it wouldn't get him killed immediately. So there's that. All right, that looks that looks actually pretty good. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. That's I like that. That's a neat idea. The way he falls over backwards and catches himself with the blade. So at the same, it's on the one hand, it's kind of an oopsie, but it's also. Uh, a way for them to show, oh, look at how good this sword is. You know, you can he can support his weight on it, he can flex it pretty hard, and it'll return to true because it's properly hardened and tempered. I do like that. So the Japanese guy has an underbind against the spine of the blade of the Chinese dude. Instead of dipping under and cutting to the body, which he could have easily done, he changes the angle to a much more equal bind. This kind of bind, they can both push, they can, and the his opponent can defend against that. So, missed opportunity right here. I know, I'm overanalyzing hard. Nobody cares about such fine details in a movie, but hey, this is what you're here for, right? Right? Yeah, another unnecessarily flashy maneuver. Okay. Oh yeah, now we're getting full nonsense level. Yep, they broke out the wires and everything. I mean, do I have to say anything about that? That's that's full on physics. What's that? We don't care about physics. This is kind of anime level ridiculous. It started out pretty good, actually. I mean, yeah, sure, some flashy moves and everything, but it started kind of relatively down to earth. Mmm. Oh yeah, angry push. That does absolutely nothing. I still have that on my to-do list. Make a video about 10 different ways to defeat the Hollywood style push because this is really dumb. It's It accomplishes nothing and it, it can be easily exploited. But we have to have some kind of flashback, right? Yes, flashback. Let's skip that. We don't need that. I mean, you probably do need that for the story and all, but Right here, hmm. strike with the butt end of the handle, hmm. yep, not bad, add some tension, and now we've got some more jumpy, rolly shenanigans, 
Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Can't really complain. A little bit spinny there, but nothing too outrageous. Mm-hmm. They tend to not really follow up after they after the hand-to-hand -hand techniques. Like if you nail some your opponent in the chest with an elbow and push them back, now is the time to cut. Because at first you're at you know, grappling distance, so you can strike them with your elbow. And if if the opponent does stumble backwards, now is your time. Cut him. You got him. But of course they can't do that because he's the hero. And he's got plot armor, and the fight needs to go on for longer. Hmm, okay. That looked pretty neat. Um, pretty simple. There's a, a bunch of uh, undercuts, but looks pretty good. Let's take a look at that at half speed. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Stop playing, dude. <laughs> That is not very effective. Oh, no, no. This... This looks cool, and I'm sure it's supposed to show that both of them are equal. Like, they're, they're equivalent skill. That's why they, you know, maybe kill each other, or almost. We'll see in a moment. But this is such a beginner thing. Like, this is... If you... If both thrust at each other like this, an uncovered thrust, very high risk. They have not taken any precautions to make sure that the opponent... Like, basically, the ideal situation for a thrust is you already control your opponent's blade. Either you control it or it's in a position where it cannot threaten you. So if I control your blade with mine, if I constrain it by crossing the line, putting my edge on your flat and basically making sure that your blade is off center and is pointing away from me and can threaten me, now I can safely thrust. This is bad news. Yes. If they weren't outside of their measure, where it's pointless to throw that thrust to begin with, if they were at the correct distance, they would both be dead, or at least not dead instantly, because thrusts take a while, but they would at least be seriously injured. Possibly mortally wounded. <laughs> okay, I, I do like that. That, that is neat. <laughs> when he slaps the blade and knocks it into the dude's face, that's a good one. I, I definitely like that. There, there are actually strikes with the flat of the blade in historical European martial arts as well. Uh, not like that, but there's situations where you you would come around with the flat of the blade and knock him in the face like this, and then follow up with either a cut or grappling or whatever else we need to. So usually it's meant as a setup. You're supposed to do something afterwards, which he didn't do because, again, the fight needs to go on for a bit longer. So... Real life fights, you know, realistic combat is fast. It doesn't normally drag on for terribly long. And it's clear that they try to express that they, the skill is about similar, or at least uh, neither one nor the other clearly has the upper hand. It's not like one of the two gets steamrolled and just humiliated and destroyed. It's weird because some of the stuff is is pretty good and it's, it's pretty you know down to earth uh i mean i say good of course the quality of the choreography is largely independent of the realism if that's not what they're going for but it's it's interesting to see you know some of the stuff is is pretty convincing and then they whip out the wires and then take off and defy physics so a little bit strange that mix but overall it's a pretty enjoyable fight scene i'd say well done and uh yeah worth a watch, I suppose. So, hope you liked the commentary. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. A Chinese fighter with a katana versus a mother... I mean, this would be kind of interesting if it was a Chinese dude with a katana and a Japanese dude with a miao dao. Whatever.